G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Hellstorm Missile Launcher. This is a faithfully made recreation of the Hellstorm Missile Launcher that originally existed in Fallout 76. Not to be confused with the port, which is this one here. We can go over the subtle differences of it, but having a quick look at this thing, it's a pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation. The thing that jumps out to me that is the major difference, other than like the really small things that you'll have to switch between this and this to actually see them and pick them out is this thing's um, handle on the magazine is a little bit higher and that is just to support the standard vanilla game missile launcher animations whereas the handle on this one is sort of sort of halfway up on the um, magazine thing there um, where you'll actually not hold on to anything as you're reloading the port they actually altered the uh, reloading animations for Fallout 76 this thing does it without any of the animation uh, tomfoolery which is good because They've just retooled animations like Bethesda, wouldn't it? Totally makes sense for the handle to be up here and out of the way where you might be aiming this thing with its iron sights. Uh, but, you know, that's just personal preference. I do think this thing looks very good. And if you even look on the opposite side of this thing, they've even gotten all of the details in as well. So, yeah, really well done here. Pending potential Bethesda lawsuit kind of really done well. Okay, we're done with you. Time to put you away. Now, this thing, like the version in Fallout 76, has your standard missiles. You've got napalms, cryos, plasmas, and also extended, which gives you more of a magazine capacity. This one um, the tube is there, but you can't actually see the individual missiles in that tube. That's just one cylinder there with a little bit more coloring. I don't think there's any orange on the version of the vanilla uh, game Fallout 76 um, Hellstorm missile launcher. So that's awesome. We've also got the option for many sites, including scopes, night vision, recons, you name it. And also reflex sites. So if you want to use this thing in bats, it'll be slightly better equipped to uh, use, utilize your AP points more efficiently should you throw on the uh, reflex site like that, which is nice. Legendary effect is there provided by legendary modification. The emblem here, you can have the standard Brotherhood of Steel. You can also have the military star or the Minutemen. That's kind of cool. I would like to see more in the way of faction things here, like Commonwealth Gunners, Disciples Gang, Pack Gang, and Operator Gang, all that kind of cool things. Children of Adam too, and uh, maybe Adam Cats. There's heaps of factions you can put this in. Hell, even Enclave. So hopefully we'll have more of an expansion on the uh, faction decals in the future, pending update on this mod. So we'll go for just the standard traditional Brotherhood of Steel paint on this looks kind of cool and you've also got these ones now these ones are just a creation club leftover thing so uh, they don't actually do anything i would th i would have thought they would have changed the um textures here which seem to be just uh, that of a standard missile launcher anyway but nope that's locked into that shiny sort of chrome looking texture that they've got there it's not chrome but you get the idea it's shiny it'll attract magpies <laughs> Um, you'll see what I mean in a second, but we'll create more of these so we can experiment with the different types of elemental ammos and we'll get started. Um, also a word, this thing is under normal circumstances added to the uh, leveled list post the reunions quest. If you don't know what that one is, it's where you go and kill Kellogg, you go kick his ass at Fort Hagen. But there's a patch where you can make this thing uh, spawn in as soon as the game starts or I guess when you'll find vanilla game missile launches, so sort of mid to late game, but yeah, you can find this in the world. You can't actually craft it as far as the mod will tell you. All right, we are back at Immersive Gunners Plaza. Here is our Hellstorm missile launcher in first person. I also like the touch of the hexagon on the reflex light, and we're using the hexagon barrels. That might just be a coincidence, though. It'd be really awesome, though, if that changed depending on which element you were using. Like, there was a little flame icon if you were using the napalms, a little snowflake if you're using... <laughs> snowflake, everyone uses that term to describe people, not snow. But yeah, if you're using the cryo ones, a snowflake would be awesome, right? Uh, anyways, uh, here's another couple of missile launches. This one here has the napalm barrel, and you can tell because it's got that red thing that means explosive a bit of flame there on the side you, you know that kind of icon for your reflex site looks great and i do like how they've used colors to designate the uh, different variants um apart from each other that little bit extra vibrancy just brings the whole thing alive a little bit more it looks a little bit more interesting with the vibrant colors don't you think this one here has the cryo if you look quickly at the top here there's going to be a little bit of a glow mappage there to light this thing up if you've got it during the night which is kind of cool or just in dark areas 
And lastly, we've got the plasma, which is glowing green at the bottom there. It's uh, the plasma's ready to go and has a little bit more of a yellow sort of vibrant color up the top, which is nice. And one thing is that you can't use this thing with classic holstered weapons, but even if we could, that would get in the way of this incredibly important piece of a power right here. Flag pies, if you know, you know, and it's been a little bit late. I forgot I made this. I basically just changed the textures on a hoodie that I found on the internet on a Fallout mod. Anyways, one of these has the reflex scope, so we'll use this one to start off with. The game didn't crash, I just jumped back in time for a little bit. I'm a time lord, you all know it. And uh, let's begin, shall we? Now, we've got the napalm one with the uh, recon scope here, which, as you can tell, is um, massive overkill. There's no reason for a scope for, to be ever this long on a weapons which projectiles move so slow, but at least we can get a nice view of what our targets are in the distance, and uh, we can get started maybe by strategically placing a few missiles so that when they hit, they all sort of hit at once, and we can maximize the amount of kills that we get out of it. Black shooting over here, for example. A couple over there. Never mind, we've hit the... Um, We've hit the pole there, and here's a good time to uh, bring up the explosion on the uh, napalm variant, which is kind of odd. There's no big, like, missile launcher standard explosion. They're just sort of, the missile goes bye-byes, and then bam, there's some Molotov flames there for a little bit. So I think that could be tweaked a little bit, just to have a little bit of an explosion. Keep the flames somehow, and I don't know how you'd do it using vanilla assets, because the, generally the Molotovs have a different type of explosion, but if you could add those two elements together, this thing would look a little bit more believable, and there's no big bang, boom shot after it explodes or hits the target either, so it feels a little bit less lively than the missile launchers would expect, and I just got flashbanged. I forgot the sunglasses. Staring directly into the sun like that, not good for you. Anyways, so things are going pretty well so far, so uh, the heat's coming up, so what we'll do is we'll go for the cryo variant here, which, just like its Fallout 76 variant, has the ability to slow your targets down, which gives you some nice tactical uh, benefits, including stopping a charging giant enemy, like a super mutant, like a big, big super mutant, not the big, big, big super mutants, but... You know, the scary ones that have, like, the mini-nukes in their hands. It'll, it'll chase you down and explode. So, yeah, there's some good tactical benefits for this thing. Also slows down their staggers. Any flying enemy breaks the uh, laws of physics with as well. More, more so in Fallout 76. And I believe we may have found a leveled list variant of it. Or is that an RPG? Nope, that's an RPG-7. Also a good missile launcher mod. Looks like Tactical has showed up to give me a hand, so, uh, we'll th never mind, we've just betrayed him and killed him on one shot. But having our enemies on ice like this has done pretty well, but I feel like I'm suffering a little bit at range here, so let's turn the heat back up. We'll use the Plasma Rounds, should be the strongest versions of them all. Should we get the shots close enough, we'll do a good job. I gotta say, I feel like the uh, explosion radius is not as high as what you'd expect a standard vanilla missile launcher would be. Like, normally you could get away with shooting the back wall there and the explosion radius will be wide enough to kill that gunner on the uh, veranda just before, but no such luck for me. But luckily for me, uh, this thing is easily dispatching enemies despite many of the missed shots that I'm getting just because, well, it's a missile launcher for one, with not the most uh, generous of splash damages, of course, but it's easy to get two to three gunners at once should they be standing around each other very fast. Now let's use the standard variant now. So in terms of improving upon this mod, it's got all the stuff that's in Fallout 76, and whether that's the vision just to, like, literally replicate it and add a few things here and there. I've talked about adding all of the good cover turret. Oh, that's it. You're copying it now, mate. There we go. I've never wasted a critical in my life that was perfectly justifiable to use. Now, 
what you could do to make this thing better is or to improve its overall effectiveness is specialize a missile set like i have a standard magazine but have high velocity missiles maybe mini rockets you can fire out of this thing keep the old um this particular hex barrel design but have it fire lots of mini rockets like a mini rhino from ratchet and clank sort of thing you know and I mean, not the most original of things, but, you know, you're adding upon a Fallout 76 weapon, which is pretty good by itself already, but you, know, you could do a little bit more. Maybe you could have nice. upgraded variants of the... Excuse me. I'm the only one that's allowed to use explosives here, bucko. And a couple of double taps just to make sure they're dead. All right. So that was it against Gunners Plaza. It did a pretty good job there. Um, not too surprising, though. It is a missile launcher and generally explosives in this game, should you spec to them in a specific specific fashion, is good. Also, I don't know what material this hoodie is made of, but I don't think that's going to be the best as a windbreak. I don't think. Another cool option you can have would just be the standard smart rockets from the vanilla game missile launcher. So you don't have to embarrass yourself on camera by missing obvious targets when you can just have the game aim for you. Speaking of game aiming for you, let's check out this thing a little bit in VATS. We've got a full crit bar ready to go. There's probably not much benefit to shooting this guy in the head, but I'm going to do it anyway. Looks like we get four shots per VATS round, which is enough to uh, get me a fuller reload, which is pretty nice, but I suppose... Actually, no, this is a six-barreled one. Never mind. Under normal circumstances, yes. And now, we might have to deal with a few punk rust devils trying to get us, and are you going to target me now? Yeah, probably your biggest threat, but still. Maybe I'll go stand over here instead of, like, copying maximum death from Mr. Swan. Now, luckily for me, this guy's a big target, so no excuses for missed shots here. Absolutely nothing, and we didn't even get staggered there. Wow, you are not hitting as hard today. Oh, you know why that is? It's because there's this hoodie at the moment. It's got, like, full ballistic weave. So I'm like unkillable. <laughs> that's that's too bad, Mr. Swan. Okay. Let's see if we can slow him down a little bit. I doubt we're going to be able to slow down a behemoth creature. But the next monster we might be able to do that. And he's actually outlived the rust devils that are attacking him. They're being beaten up by a withered feral. We'll just uh, sort this thing out. I also quite like the design of like the super evil devil robots that the um, dudes that the Rust Devils have, so that's kind of cool. What was that, by the way? Oh, this is a pipe gun. Lame. You better don't quit. <laughs> awesome. Not every ne not every often that you get a bash kill that explodes someone's head, but I have installed a mod that gives you slow motion when you exit combat. The last enemy that you kill will give you a slow mirror, so that gunner's gunners that raider's head just exploded in slow motion there worth a smile don't you think vicky yeah smile like a psychopath hey that's where she come from she's a disciple so she likes it when it gets bloody all right so there's a different feral ghoul i refer to this one as a wendigo but he's actually a bloodthirsty with it now i'm wondering whether we can slow this guy down because he's just a big old ghoul right so logically we could be able to do it and absolutely not but we might be able to stagger him it doesn't help when we're not hitting him at all so this is going to go down about the same but i'll have to be a little bit careful on where i'm putting my rockets because if he's too close and i shoot myself then i'm in for a world of pain that's not good Fairly easy flight. I think it's going to be a pretty crazy video, to be honest. Uh, we're not putting a lot of effort into the uh, shooting on this thing. And um, despite all of that nonsense that he put up and 
dancing he did around, he had no chance there, so yeah. Um, so probably the most balancing thing you could do to this is just to give missiles weight, so you can't just spam them all day and all night. So that's what survival's for, but we don't play survival, we play big boy very hard difficulty. Because I like to fast travel, man. I, I don't have time to run halfway across the Commonwealth to go to Preston Garvey to send in a quest for a mega reward of XP. Alright, so the next trick, I'm going to shoot the plasma rockets from a long way back. And it, we're, we're in the night now, so we're going to get a good fireworks display. And so help me, if I can't hit that gigantic bear from over there then uh, we're in going to be in a little bit of trouble. We've got a mutation on something, but he's coming this way. Perhaps a little bit of that would be uh, opportune at the moment. I just missed a 93% shot, and off he goes down the ledge. Now, you're going to stand there and just take it like a Skyrim mammoth? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, the only problem is I've got a bunch of these uh, bare friends to deal with. These guys don't get stuck as easy. Very difficult to use this weapon at range. Ah, oh, here's the one that I hit first and mutated. You would have thought that must have hit him again because he's usually their limbs grow back after they get mutated. All right, one more hit. Who would have thought it'd be so difficult to hit a bear? Now this guy. I suppose now we can give a we can have a good idea of what kind of damage we get from each. So this. The Plasmas is getting 1066. Cryo, 1066. Napalm, 1066. Okay. So we freeze him, and then we burn him, and then the standard, 1066. Okay. So, despite my claims earlier, I'm a liar. We don't actually have different, uh, <laughs> different damages. I was probably just, uh thinking that the cry would be a little bit weaker because the damage discrepancies in the Fallout 76 version, but that's fine. Um, so if you want to know how you can kill a sitting duck like that, well, yeah, 1066 damage against the uh, ancient Commonwealth bear. That I think that's the bear that Ulysses talks about in the Lonesome Road DLC. Look, I think you get the idea now. Um, so this has been the Hellstorm Missile Launcher. It's a great recreation. There's room here for improvement, or at least to expand upon what we've already got. I'm surprised that truck survived the, uh, sorry, that's not a truck. It's a ute, mate. I'm surprised it survived that second missile. Must have hit something else or not been quite in the radius, but you know, add more types of ammunition to this thing, and then maybe expand what factions paint libraries you can put it on, or maybe just making completely new paints for this thing. Like, this is an arm race one, I believe, in Fallout 76, as we take a seat next to Spooky Scary Skeleton. Hey, it's the month. It's the scary month of October, man. So, you know, we'll, we'll take a seat with him. We'll maybe steal his whiskey that he's got right there. But I think you get the idea. And I do recommend this mod if you don't want to download a dodgy port from the internet to, be, to have your uh, computer infected with many viruses this is a pretty good idea just to get a one that's free on the Nexus and you don't have to worry about any problems coming from uh, the a dark web. <laughs> it's not the dark web. But if you are interested in this thing, links will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Good old Collingwood forever.